Hi everyone, welcome to the Beginner Lessons video series. And the purpose of this series is going to be to build a strong base of fundamentals, uh, building good guitar habits, positive muscle memory, and um, giving you guys a bunch of tips to hopefully help you get past some of these barriers or walls that we uh, all of us ran into when we started playing guitar. It, I think those initial stages are key for success and having fun, which is certainly the purpose, you know, getting into playing guitar initially, right? We all want to have fun playing. Um, and we want to limit or at least learn how to deal with uh, these barriers that we run into um, throughout the course of playing, but I think it's most important at the early stages and can be, if you're doing it on your own, can be very tough to uh, spot these things that may be kind of you know veering you off the road a little bit um, and there will also be lots of just encouragement to keep doing it the more you practice things are improving but I always say it's kind of like watching yourself age in the mirror um, something that you can't really see happen and you know that it is happening though right so you are improving <laughs> But we just have to kind of deal with uh, the expectations as well, right? I see that a lot with my students where expectations are uh, that, you know, snap of a finger, I'm going to be playing guitar, I'm going to be having fun, I'm going to be rocking out, da 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 And when that doesn't happen, our expectations are not met, therefore we feel maybe we're not supposed to be playing guitar. And that's absolutely not the case. Um, everybody can do it. And I think dealing with those key moments, those little bumps in the road, um, is a big part of it. So we'll talk about a wide range of topics. Um, this is certainly geared towards people either starting out from scratch or maybe even playing for you know somewhere in the neighborhood of three to six months. Um, and just to help you navigate the road, right? And the journey and, and having fun with uh, guitar and music. Um, but maybe for some of you that have been playing a little bit longer, you might find some, some helpful tips as well. So we'll be covering a wide range of topics throughout the series, uh, but this is certainly geared towards somebody who is at the onset of picking up a guitar. Um, so what we're going to talk about in this video is details of sitting with the guitar, uh, the terms, parts of a guitar, just to go over that in case there's any curiosities there, um, tuning of course, and holding a pick. So let's jump right in. How you sit with the guitar is very important because it can um, be a big factor in your success or lack thereof with whatever it is that you happen to be working on. Um, so let's talk about just general positioning of the guitar. I'll just kind of run you through what I run my beginner students through. Uh, we've got the waist of the guitar here. <clears throat> that is going to go on your right thigh. I've got a little bit of distance here to my torso so I can lean the guitar into my body, right? Not flat, but you definitely don't want it pressed up against your uh, body to where the everything is just going straight towards the ground. It just doesn't give you any depth perception on the strings, and then you're going to end up trying to lean over like this, right? So a little bit out on the right thigh, tilt it back. And then, of course, our third point of contact is going to be that right arm coming over the lower bout here. And we can put a little bit of weight on that, and that should lock it in place. I don't need my left hand to hold things up here, right? You, you shouldn't feel like it's wobbling around on you. Um, so when I do put a little bit of weight on the body of the guitar here, it brings that neck up, so that's an important thing to take note of. At the very uh, least, you want to have it parallel with the ground, right? Don't let your neck droop down. That is just going to make things more difficult to see, uh, to play, certainly. That left hand is going to have a lot of trouble. It's just going to be awkward positioning. Um, but I'm going to give you guys another tip in, in a second here that is going to just kind of naturally put you into this position that we're talking about. So if we're sitting a little flat-footed, um, it, it tends to be the case where we're just kind of like doing this all the time and leaning over the guitar and then, you know, hard to play that way, of course. So 
three points of contact, lean it in. I've got good depth perception on my strings. Right arm is on the lower bout. I put a little bit of a tilt on that guitar. That is going to help my line of sight. That is going to help my left hand. It's just optimal positioning for the guitar. So always a little bit of an incline right here will be ideal, right? Uh, from the 180 degrees of the floor. Um, same thing if you were wearing a strap. Right? If you wear a strap, you want to have that position be the same. It's just you're not going to have your leg um, there to support it anymore. So, um, so one thing that I have just about every student do, well, I don't have them do it. I just make the suggestion. They try it out and immediately love it because very common question is I can't get comfortable with the instrument. Well, one, make sure the size of the guitar uh, is suitable for you. This is a little bit smaller of a body. Uh, I believe Siebel calls it a folk body. Different uh, guitar brands, companies will call their um, their models different names, uh, but traditionally a folk body will be a little bit smaller than uh, what is most common in stores, uh, dreadnought. Dreadnoughts are kind of big and bulky, even a little bit wider than this. So. You know, if you're not that tall, don't have that long of limbs, a full-size dreadnought guitar may not be the best choice. So there are other options out there though. There's, of course, three-quarter size, there's minis, there's baby tailors, stuff like that. Um, but then there's also just different body styles and I recommend going in and sitting down with those just to feel that you are uh, comfortable because you don't want to be uncomfortable playing that obviously is not a favorable or preferable situation. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying, what I have my students do that they immediately love is use one of these guys, a footstool, 10 bucks, right? You can get it at any music store or Amazon. Um, for your right foot, just, I have it on the lowest setting here and I prop my right foot up and even if I was like sitting like this originally, if I put my right foot up, it just automatically puts me into this more uh, organic position, if you will, for playing guitar. So I highly recommend using a footstool. Um, so you know, a lot of times I'll end up going on my tippy toe or I'll put my right foot on top of my left foot to prop my leg up, but I'm typically always propping that right leg up. And a surefire way to make sure that you're doing that and also not straining your body is a footstool. It's a very simple fix and it just makes everything so much more comfortable. So I've got my guitar in a good position, got this neck inclined a little bit. I've got the body leaning into my uh, torso a little bit so I can get good depth perception on the strings for the left hand. I've got my right arm right around the uh, joint there, just sitting on the edge of that guitar on the lower bout so I can basically swing like a pendulum here and then my left arm is free to do what it wants and there's a lot of there's a lot that goes into that but we're going to talk about that more in detail um, with specific topics in other uh, videos so but just basics of the left hand here thumb super important do not ignore this try to manage any bad habits um, immediately so I'll just give you uh, general idea of positioning of the thumb and main things to avoid. So relax, right? Make it natural. Relax on the pad of the thumb. So many people will ask, what am I supposed to do with my thumb? And they start doing all these weird things and, you know, making it tense and tightening it up. It's like, obviously that's not natural. You want it to feel natural. So like you're holding a tennis ball, right? If I were just kind of holding my hand like that, I'm not really putting any uh, tension on my fingers and then I go and sit on the neck that's basically what it is a nice compact handshake I'm just relaxing on the pad don't press with the thumb that's probably where a lot of that those problems come from pressing too much with the thumb then you're uh, flexing it or extending it you know and it just makes everything very difficult to manage over here so all of this needs to be relaxed right that is a big part of the hand. If that gets tense, it just spreads everywhere. So try to keep this relaxed. All the work is gonna be done with the fingers, a nice compact hand shape. So you, the things that you wanna avoid initially, even though you will see people do it, 
don't wrap your thumb over that net, right? Especially if you have small hands. If you have enormous hands and that's just how it naturally happens, okay. But I see kids doing this. That's not gonna serve you any good, right? You have to be in position to grab these notes. So you see where my thumb is here right now? If your thumb is drifting over like this and almost running parallel with the neck, no good, right? You need to support this with your thumb, just as if you were going to pick something up. And if you're sitting on the tip of your thumb like that, that's no good either, right? There are different situations where the thumb is gonna be doing a variety of things, but the name of the game is always going to be limiting tension, right? Trying to relax as much as possible. So don't underestimate the power of sitting with good posture, right? Trying to stay relaxed, keeping the position of the guitar in uh, an optimal position to allow you to relax and play uh, as much as is possible at the stage that you are at. It will um, pay off big time. You may not know that immediately because like I said, you're, you're, you're in that experience, you're in that moment, you're um, it's, it's hard to see the improvement. I have students come back after a week of practice and they're like, I don't really know if I'm doing any better. And I can immediately tell like, oh yeah, this is so much uh, cleaner, your chords sound better, whatever it is, right? Um, they just, they can't see that because they are themselves and they're repeating the same thing over and over. Um, and that goes for all of us, but um, y you build that awareness and consciousness, consciousness as you uh, proceed, um, you know, as you progress and move forward. But in any case, you know, you may not know how much it is helping you. I see people who don't listen to any of this stuff and, you know, probably don't practice either and there's not really any progress happening there and I will be honest with them. But on the flip side of that, there are folks who do everything I ask them to do and they practice regularly, routinely, and they're making magnificent progress and they still think they're not doing enough. So maybe a more important thing to say would be just, you know, keep your expectations realistic. That doesn't mean it has to move slow or is moving slow. It's just don't envision yourself being a professional guitarist. People spend a lot of time on this stuff, right? This is, it's not easy. So patience and just constant effort. Uh, will be key to that success. Um, anyways, so let's jump into the terms, the uh, parts of the guitar real quick. This will be a short little segment. Uh, we've got the headstock here. We've got our tuning machines. Uh, we've got the guitar neck, of course, our fret boxes, and our fret bars, all right? Um, this guitar has these little inlays, the single dots here, and then a seagull uh, at the 12th fret. Typically, it's gonna be like single dots in the center and then two dots at the 12th fret, um, along with the dots that go on the uh, side of the neck. Kind of looks like the top to us, but the side of the neck. Um, you know, and that's something that you definitely wanna use for guiding your hand around. Um, then, of course, we've got the body and face of the guitar. Uh, this one has a cutaway. Not all of them have a cutaway. I've uh, got the sound hole, of course, where everything is, um, all the sound is coming from. We've got our strings. We've got the bridge, the bigger part here, bridge pins, and the saddle. And if you have an acoustic electric, you'll have some electronics in here and some dials for volume and tone, or uh, a lot of guitars have it up top here on uh, the side of the body, and some will have a tuner, and uh, the cable for this one goes right here. And of course, that is also, along with this guy, uh, the fixtures for the guitar strap. Real quick, I just wanted to touch on uh, parts of an electric guitar. Um, there's going to be a ton of variety out there as far as uh, models and how things are set up. This is a Gibson Les Paul, um, so we use it as our example. I have two pickups here, 
right? And then I've got pickup selector switch, so my rhythm pickup is up here, which is going to be the same as the uh, neck pickup. And all the way down will be my treble pickup, which is going to be my bridge pickup. And then I also have the ability to uh, use both of those simultaneously. Uh, but like I said, you know, Stratocaster will have a different setup. They'll have like a five toggle uh, pickup selector. And I've seen some pretty wild setups with a whole bunch of different switches. And so, but anyways, um, and then you've got your knobs here, your volume and tone. So this is gonna be my volume and my tone. Volume obviously go up and down in volume. Tone is going to take it from brighter to darker. Uh, the higher the setting, the brighter, the lower the setting, the darker. That is going to be for this pickup right here. And then these two, uh, same thing, volume and tone for my bridge pickup. I also just wanted to say real quick, all the stuff that we said about sitting with the acoustic guitar is going to apply uh, to the electric guitar just the same. The only difference that you're going to run into is the body size. Um, so the difference will be immediately obvious if you sit with a dreadnought body guitar and then a Gibson Les Paul or a Fender Stratocaster, you're just gonna feel like you have all this space in here. Um, but the setup is the same. It, with the acoustic, maybe I'm sitting a little bit more on the edge here, and then with my electric, I'm a little bit more on the uh, front, right? And a lot of guitars will have a, uh, a little bevel here, kind of like, a, like an angled side for you to position your arm there. So um, everything should feel more or less the same. Remember just to stay comfortable. And one thing I forgot to mention when I was going over the parts on the acoustic is the nut. That's a pretty key part of the guitar where we have slots for the strings to go through. That's where the vibration stops. And there is a lot that can happen here that you know keeps your guitar in tune or takes it out of tune um, or uh, you know, affects the playability of it. So it's an important little piece there. All right, so that brings us to tuning. Very important to make sure that your guitar is in tune. Students will always ask me how often should I tune? Every time you sit down to play. No questions asked, right? Just make sure your guitar is in tune so you know that you're hearing things correctly. There's a lot of things that affect uh, whether a guitar stays in tune. Certainly one is the quality of build. So if it's not a good quality guitar, it's gonna go out of tune or it probably is permanently out of tune just because you know you get a $50 guitar, you get what you pay for. Um, there is a point in putting a little bit more money towards uh, a nicer guitar. Not a ton, but you know these all-in-one packages for 50 bucks, don't necessarily recommend that. There might be some good ones out there. I, don't, I haven't uh, gone through all of those, but when uh, students come in and they have these guitars where the strings are sitting this high above the neck and uh, the neck feels like a brick. And it's just, you know, um, there are things to avoid certainly. So, but anyways, tune every time you sit down to play. Uh, real quick, we're just gonna go over these string numbers and names. So a lot of things on guitar are kind of opposite of what we would expect. Uh, of course, we have six strings and we're going to label those with string numbers. Closest to you is six, not one. So the thickest string is six. And then of course, five, four, three, two, one. And then for the tuning machines, that's six, five, four, go around the bend, three, two, one. Make sure you have your hand when you're tuning on the correct tuning machine based on the string that you're playing and make sure you're playing the string that you want because that's an easy way to pop a string and you know that happens pretty violently when they pop off. You wanna be careful about your eyes and stuff so just make sure that you're tuning, um, playing and tuning the, the same one. All right, string names, even more important than the string numbers. We have E. A, D, G, B, E. I'll use acronyms a lot to help students uh, learn the string names, but you're gonna be tuning every day, so you're gonna see those, those letter names. Pay attention to those. Know that you're looking for E, know that you're looking for A, know that you're you know, tuning to D. 
um, don't just go to the center of the tuner and then just assume it's in tune. Know the names of your strings, create your own acronym. That'll be super easy to remember if you make it up yourself. Um, but ultimately you're just going to, it's gonna be second nature because, um, because you're tuning so often, okay? And that is good fundamental information to know because it instructs you on how to find the other pitches or notes along each string on the different frets. Um, okay, so again, that's E, A, D, G, B, E. That is called standard tuning. There are lots of other tunings out there. Don't worry about that. You can get just about everything done that you want to get done with standard tuning. Alter tunings or something else to find out, uh, find out about later. Um, we'll probably cover a couple of those later on down the road. But uh, standard tuning, you want to get super comfortable with that. Now I'll talk about tuning just with one string here. Um, as far as the tuning machines, don't be afraid you know, about which way you turn it. As you'll see, you just experiment. You want to make sure um, that the string is ringing out. So I'll do it with the high E here. And let's say, let's say I was a little under uh, E, I was a little flat. Okay, so I loosen it up there. Don't worry, like if you happen to keep going down, you can hear the pitch going down, and you can also see in the tuner, the main thing would be to be able to hear it, but you can see in the tuner it's just kind of circling back and it's also changing pitches. So we know that's loosening. If I need to tighten, then I just go the opposite direction. Now, like I said, don't just turn it without playing it because that's also an easy way to pop your string off. Play it and then turn. This, the guitar is not going to maintain that sound forever so you have to play it again and keep on adjusting until you find that note. Alright, so as far as tuners are concerned, I know there's a lot of apps out there so I'm trying to get a better picture on that uh, tuner. These snarks are great. Uh, there's a the snark brand um, there are a lot of these type of headstock tuners that work off of vibration. You can see it's picking up me talking right now through the guitar. Um, so they're very sensitive. Um, but it's great because it doesn't get uh, interfered with as easily as something with a mic or an app that you might be using on your phone. And then you can just clip on there and you can leave them on. You'll see a lot of people just with tuners on their headstock at all times. Um, I don't tend to do that, but it is an option. Um, they're just easier to keep track of and easier to use, really. So I always recommend to everybody to get a chromatic tuner. A chromatic tuner means that the uh, tuner recognizes all pitches of the musical alphabet, not just the, um, the pitches that we tune the guitar strings to. That can be very misleading and uh, can lead to a lot of confusion. So I always recommend getting a chromatic tuner. So just to show you what that means again, so right now it says E and it's right in the center. So if I go up, I'm gonna tighten this up. See it going into the, it's in that yellow. Now it's going to F. So it was on E, I tightened it up and it went to F. So it went to the next note in the alphabet. All right, and if I kept going up, then it'd go to F sharp. If I go down now, Okay, so this is all E, 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 and then I cross over, now it says D sharp. Okay, so this is D sharp in tune as far as uh, we are concerned in the US. You know, this is also D sharp, potentially somewhere else in another country. That's the whole uh, A equals 440 business, so make sure you have a reading on your uh, tuner that says 440 hertz. Um, if it says like 438 or 446, you wanna make sure that you change that. Um, that is our standard um, for tuning. So again, note that I'm picking the string and then turning, I'm letting it ring out. The tuner needs to hear the string. It needs to get, have that vibration through the body of the guitar. Um, I'm not plucking it really forcefully. You know, just a simple light pick is going to do the trick and then if it's not ringing out and you're still adjusting, pick it again. So, as you can see on this tuner, 
right there is in tune, right? That little teal, blue, green mark, whatever you want to call it. If I go lower, it's in that red area. It still says E, but that's not in tune. I have to get it up to the center there. If I keep going, then I get into this kind of yellow green area, same thing there, that's not in tune. So guitars are kind of finicky and you want to get it in tune as much as possible. Another thing you can do is cover all the other strings so they don't vibrate and just pick that string by itself. That'll give you a very clean sound um, for that particular string. So chromatic tuner, tune every day. Uh, make sure you have your pick and your uh, left hand or right hand if you're playing left-handed um, on the correct tuning machine and pick and then start turning, okay? And just get it to that center mark. All right, guys, last but not least, we're going to talk about holding a pick. Um, we'll cover this in more detail when we're working on uh, strumming, picking single notes, uh, technique exercises, stuff of that nature. But I just want to give you a general uh, idea or foundation for holding the pick. First thing to say is there are a lot of different picks, a lot of different thicknesses, a lot of different sizes, uh, a lot of different materials, textures. There is a huge variety of picks. Best thing I can tell you to do is to uh, get an assortment and, and play around. Don't, don't get like 50 different guitar picks because you're not really going to be able to get through that many. Maybe like try uh, three to five and just have those handy. And some that are, you know, there's not that big of a difference between them. So I recommend starting thin, uh, maybe around, uh, so like this is a one millimeter. The, the thickness is not necessarily gonna be that visible, but you can certainly feel it in the flexibility of the pick. I recommend using a more flexible pick to start out. Uh, Dunlop picks are great. There's, they have a ton of selection. I like these little nylon picks for acoustic guitar. Um, they have a little texture on the uh, on both sides, so it doesn't slip around in your fingers as much. Um, but you know, maybe somewhere around like 0.45 to 0.6 would be a good uh, starting point for the thickness. So you can feel the flexibility um, of the pick. You can feel the pick going through the strings. And even more importantly, we're probably going to be pinching that pick a little too tight initially. Um, that's just kind of instinct and it's gonna happen. So with a more flexible pick, if we squeeze it really hard, it'll still flex through the uh, strings as we're strumming or picking. Um, whereas if it was a thicker pick, it's gonna be a really harsh sound if you're squeezing down on that pick too much, okay? Um, so somewhere in the neighborhood of like, yeah, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, you know, that'd be a good area to play around with. Um, and then you can try nylon, plastic, texture, not texture, just a couple different things there. Um, like I said, you go into a music store, you're gonna see all the variety or just look online. It's crazy, um, but hopefully that gives you a, a, an avenue to take. Just um, try out a few different kinds from, I like Dunlop. I think uh, that they pretty much have a monopoly on picks and uh, I exclusively use that. So anyways, but to holding a pick, there are lots of different ways to hold a pick. Uh, things that we can do with our fingers, you will see people uh, do things that are very um, out of the ordinary, uh, perhaps like holding with the thumb and the middle finger versus the thumb and the index finger. Uh, but anyways, you know, there are always going to be exceptions to the rule with stuff on the guitar. I'm just going to give you a, a, a good grounding in uh, how to think about it and then things will manipulate, uh, you will manipulate things and things will take shape as you continue to uh, grow with the guitar and you know, you kind of figure out what styles of music that you like um, that will direct you towards uh, holding and managing the pick in different ways. So, the way I explain to my students, take your index finger and then just place the pick with the point sticking out, basically like a fingernail on the pad of your index finger. So, 
Hopefully you can see that clearly. All right, I've got the, the fat end of the pick pointing back towards me and I've got the point going straight out towards you. Then I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm just going to reach over and kind of make an X across the opposite side of the pick. So just to give you a general view there, my index finger is curled and my thumb is more straight, All right? So I don't do the holding it on top of the knuckle. You see a lot of people do that. I hold it on the pad of my index finger. Um, I believe that is what the majority of people do now, but like I said, there's a lot of variety uh, as far as people's approaches. So extension of the index finger, cross that thumb over, and then you can see I am letting very little of that pick protrude from my fingers, right? You don't want to hold it like that because the strings are gonna take that pick right out of your fingers. You're also gonna end up putting the pick too far in between the strings, which is gonna make it hard to get across them. Uh, that'll just make it feel impossible. So choke up on the pick quite a bit. A great feature or uh, ability of holding the pick this way is I've got a little hinge system to utilize here, whereas if I was positioned on my knuckle, I don't necessarily get that flexibility, right? So this helps me protract and retract the pick as I am moving around strings, strumming. I just, I get more flexibility and dexterity along with using the wrist and the forearm and the elbow, okay? So it gives you another dimension to kind of tweak what you're doing. Um, it's okay if your fingers touch the strings. Don't position yourself to where your wrist is out like that, to where you have this big gap, right? That's what a lot of beginners do. Let that wrist lay flat and straight, right? You also don't want to you know, angle your wrist in some hard manner. A lot of people will do this where they're almost kind of like sawing across the strings. Just think, relax, swing like a pendulum. We're not gonna strum that big, but this is just to illustrate the motion. Um, and like I said, it's okay for your fingers, your hand, your, your palm, parts of your arm, to touch the, the guitar and the strings. Don't feel like only the pick and touch because that's gonna make it impossible to navigate. So one little side note and then we're gonna wrap up here. Um, what I'm talking about as far as making contact with the strings, as long as you're not touching the, thing, the string that you're playing, you're gonna be fine. And as long as the pick is the last thing that hits the strings, then they're still going to uh, they're still going to ring out um, and sustain sound. You're not going to touch them. But one thing that people will do, you'll see this happen uh, quite a bit, um, to be able to navigate strings is to post up a pinky as an anchor or even the ring finger and the pinky as an anchor um, or maybe the ring finger by itself to help find the strings. This long term is no good. Um, you will see people do this professionally and some people really stand by it and I'm just on the opposite side of the fence there. I think this is restrictive and it is the easier thing to do initially. That's why it's attractive. Um, but you know, even for people who do this in a professional capacity, I guarantee you they're not going to hold that tension um, that you would be holding um, as a beginner and you just don't want to do something that is going to increase tension. We need to decrease it as much as possible. So the way we deal with that is we don't want to be off of the guitar and only letting the pick um, touch the strings and we also don't want to be fixed and have an anchor where we're now rigid and our movement is restricted. Okay, so the way we deal with it is we make light contact with the strings. So for me if I'm playing single note, single string, <laughs> constantly in contact here you know whether I'm lightly touching a string I'm not grabbing anything I'm just letting my fingers hang but I'm keeping myself very close to the guitar to where um, that helps me kind of navigate where that pick is and know what string I'm on it's not an easy thing to deal with initially and know that it's going to get easier the more you play um, but we also have to think about how we're teaching ourselves to figure that out okay and this is one of those things 
um, learning how to just let that hand relax, stay very close on top of the guitar, but not applying pressure in any way, anchoring, what have you. Um, all right, guys, that was ended up being more information for the first video than I thought it would be, but it's all good information. And as you can see, you start talking about one thing and it leads to another uh, in another direction and, and on to many different topics. So, um, but I wanted to get some of the kind of non-playing stuff in the first video so you have a good uh, approach to sitting with the guitar, getting your guitar in tune, knowing what the parts are, and then dealing with this little piece of nylon or plastic that does so much for us. Um, so let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to help you out with that. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Thanks.